So the Lord put it on my heart to to talk about this. And the Lord wants me to talk about faith. And the Lord wants me to talk about how A lot of people are confused when it comes to how to be saved and what's going to matter when you stand before God. Let's read the word of the Lord. If we go to Matthew chapter 15. And we start in verse 21. We see that the chapter is called the faith of a Canaanite woman. And we see that it says in verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Excuse me. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her way, for she crieth after us. Now, first of all, Verse 24, excuse me, verse 23 speaks to one of the issues that a lot of us face as humans. Because I can speak from my own personal testimony that I have failed. I have failed the Lord because I never trusted in the Lord. And... I didn't have faith. And this is part of the human cockiness where we think that it's about us. But this woman was not crying after the disciples. This woman was crying after Jesus. This woman saw her chance to be saved and was willing because of faith to do any and everything to get to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. She didn't care what people thought about her. She didn't care what type of mud she had to crawl through. She knew that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. She knew that he was God in the flesh. She knew that he could offer her forgiveness and she knew that in his name, she could be saved. And this poor woman cried out to the Lord. And let's listen to what the Lord did when this woman cried out for him. In verse 24, it says, But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. When I was lost, and I was interpreting the scriptures through my fleshly eyes I never saw the truth in that scripture many people try to make it to be something that it's not but the truth is that faith was always what the Lord saw in a person this woman because God is a holy God Jesus Christ is Jehovah Jesus Christ is the great I am. Jesus Christ is the Lord. And because he is a holy, righteous, and gracious, and merciful God who created all mankind, 
he would never, as the Bible says, he would never despise someone with a broken and contrite heart. It doesn't matter where the person came from. It doesn't matter if they're what color of their skin. It doesn't matter how much money they have. It doesn't matter what tribe you're from. There is a reason why when you look at the beginning of the New Testament, why it says the New Testament of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because from Genesis to Revelation, it is all about Jesus. Now, <clears throat> let's go back in the word of the Lord and let's look at verse Matthew chapter 13 and I'm going to the Lord is going to have me read in verse 11 the Lord says he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which, is, which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and Anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth received see into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also bear fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold some sixty some thirty <clears throat> so as the Lord has been talking to me lately He, he continues to remind me that it's not about us. It's about faith. Too many of us are still trying to do what the law of Moses. So the law of Moses was a schoolmaster to show people that they needed a savior. But many people even today still don't understand that the law 
was written to point people to Jesus. Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the reason that we have access to God. Jesus is the reason and the way for a sinner to be saved. It is Jesus. Let's go in. Um, let's see. In Matthew chapter 12, it says in the word of the Lord, at that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they were with him, how he entered into the house of God, and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. So someone would say, oh, <clears throat> Jesus, didn't, Jesus didn't come down from heaven to correct Moses. How dare you? You need to repent. Because first of all, Jesus is Moses' creator. Jesus doesn't take orders from Moses. Jesus gives orders to Moses. The Lord is the one who spoke, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who spoke to Moses in the burning bush. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one that told, that told Moses to go tell my people go. The king of the universe, the creator of the sun, moon, and the stars does not need anyone's permission at any time to say at this point forward, you cease and desist. And at that point, when Jesus spoke, he made it clear that I am the creator of the universe, and I say, Jesus is saying that you no longer need to be worried about a Sabbath day. And once it comes out of the mouth of the Lord, the issue is closed. But because many people are trying to buy their way into heaven as those who choose to stay under the Old Testament, They seem to not understand that, that the Old Testament was a schoolmaster to show you that you had a need for a savior, to show you that you needed a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice. And God took it upon himself to come down from heaven, to give himself for your sins so that you could be forgiven because you will not be righteous before God trying to keep the law of Moses. You will fail time and time again. And the law is still into effect. Let's go, let's go back into the word of the Lord. But before that, the Lord wants me to show you what is in Matthew chapter eight. And starting in verse five, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. You know what's intriguing that the Lord showed me in the scripture here? 
a man who was a non-Jew did not need to see the Lord do something to know that he was the Lord. This man had faith. This man believed. This man didn't need the Lord to walk miles and miles to show him that he was the Lord. He just believed. But let's continue in the word of the Lord. Verse 9, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth that. So this man is making it clear that I know you are God, and I don't give you commands. Your word is all I need, Lord. By your word, Lord Jesus, it shall be done. And in verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Listen to the word of the Lord in verse 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness that shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. So the Lord is making it clear that from the beginning of time up to now, faith was the issue. It's all about Jesus, all about Jesus. Too many people think they can work their way into heaven. Well, if I if I do this, if I don't, if I if I live in a cheaper house, or if I if I if I buy the cheapest this, or if I if I um, don't wear yellow, and if I don't wear pink, and if and if I never do this and I never do that, well, the Lord told me the truth, and the Lord said this. He even spoke to me about how I used to go on the corner and preach the gospel. The Lord said, how can a sinner do all that? So if the sinner doesn't come to me, this is what Jesus is saying. And if the sinner doesn't put their faith in me, then how will the sinner, so what good are you doing? Now, I wanna clarify, the whole Bible is the word of God. I believe that 100%. But too many times, people are going on the street trying to use, you're trying to beat people upside the head with the scriptures, which it's all the word of God. But if you sit there and be the center upside the head with the law, they need Jesus to be saved. They need to be told about Jesus and what he can do for them to be saved. The message behind what you need to speak is about Jesus. It says there is no other name under heaven by which what they be saved. It says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is in the name of Jesus that they must be saved. It is the Lord that must do the work. But man, we foolishly believe and we do stuff for likes, shares, and all this other foolishness but we don't really care about these people's souls because when you're out there on the street corner, is the whole Bible the word of God? Yes. And are they wrong for preaching the Bible? Not totally, no. 
But if you do not preach to a person about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and how he came to earth and gave his life so that sinners could be forgiven and that he offers them salvation, he offers them forgiveness, he offers them cleansing, but how can a sinner know right from wrong if they do not know God? The Bible even says that, I don't know the exact verse, but in the New Testament it says that the carnal mind cannot understand the things of God, and I believe that is in the book of Romans. The carnal mind cannot understand the things of God. So beating a sinner upside the head with the scriptures when they don't know the author is counterproductive. Most go on the corner and just want to excite a riot. They want to just make fun of people. If you truly want to do the will of the Lord, your primary message will be Jesus Jesus, Jesus, and how through his power and through his work that the sinner can be saved. Yes, you talk about repentance, but the primary message is Jesus, 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 because from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is all about Jesus Christ, the Lord who gave his life for the sins of the world, God who came down from heaven to reconcile mankind to himself. That is the message. That is what gets sinners saved. That is the transforming power of God because the Holy Ghost will not come to anyone unless they come to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to, the Lord wants me to recite Matthew chapter, excuse me, chapter 5. Excuse me. Starting in verse 17. And the, and the Lord said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to, to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Even Moses, when Moses walked the earth, there are scriptures in the Old and New Testament. And in the New Testament, it's in the book of Hebrews. The Holy Spirit is reminded me that Moses covered his face to get the people to understand that his covenant was fading away, that it was all about Jesus. The Old Testament, Moses continued to tell the people that the Messiah was coming, the, the Lord was coming. But because the people wanted to look righteous and not actually be righteous. They want to stay under the law. They don't want to actually be cleansed from their sins. The issue with people has never been if you look at the stuff that the Lord did and from Genesis to Revelation, the Lord has always done backflips for mankind. He's done so much work to show his glory, to show his power, to show that he loves us, to show his grace, to show his mercy. But faith has always been the reason why people rejected him. They don't want to believe. These scriptural examples that I've given you before this last one specifically, 
Jesus would perform a miracle in front of these people. He would show them their power, and then they would turn around and ask for another sign. This is what you see. This is what the Lord sees all the time. People don't want to believe. They don't want to hear it. So what I just read was in Matthew chapter 5 that it is true. Jesus came to fulfill the law. And somebody would say, well, in verse 17, didn't the Lord said that he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets? He said, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That is true. Because the law, the reason why the Lord would not destroy the law, like he said, until heaven and earth passes away, because the law points to him. The word of the Lord is revealing that the law is to stay in place because the law is doing what it's supposed to do. The law is showing you that you need a savior, that you cannot be holy before God to work your way to heaven, that you need a perfect sacrifice. The law is pointing you to Jesus. So of course, the law would stay in place till heaven and earth passes away because not every person they hear about Jesus through the New Testament. This person could be a Jew who is under the law and through the law, the law will point them to Christ. Or someone will read the law in the world, anyone, and the law will point them to Jesus. That's why the law must stay. Not because you need to follow all those things. Do not taste, do not touch. But the law was a schoolmaster to point you to Christ. These things have gotten so far out of hand that people still want to keep the law. And I'm repeating myself, but they say things like, well, Jesus doesn't have the right to say that you don't have to honor the Sabbath day anymore. Yes, he does. He just did. He's the Lord. It's been handled. Well, Jesus says that in right here in, thank you, Lord, in Matthew 5, 33, when Jesus talks about oaths, again, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time. So Jesus is referencing the Old Testament. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So Jesus just made it clear that this is what the law says you could do. But now, here's your requirement. Jesus even says that, um, let's see here. Where am I going to look for this, Lord? The Lord will bring it to me. But what it is, is the Lord gave it to me in my head where he said that the scribe is the one that brings in things, both new and old. That's what Jesus was talking about. There are some new th there are things in the New Testament that the Lord chose because he knew that people would try to bring them over. And he was very specific. 
that faith is the reason why you will you will be saved in Christ. <clears throat> the Lord is leading me to speak about let's go I did touch on the centurion even in the <clears throat> the books of the apostle that the Holy Spirit gave that the Lord gave the apostle Paul to write the apostle Paul and all the apostles spent a lot of time trying to convince people that you can't work your way into heaven, that it's by faith that you'll be saved, by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Why do you think the Lord said that? You think works of the law are going to make you righteous before God? <clears throat> The Lord, even after he walked the earth, gave, sent his disciples to continue to tell people, look, it is by faith. It's not by works of the law. It's by faith. It's not by works of the law. And the Lord is repeating himself for a reason. It's by grace you are saved. By grace, not by works. It's, it's evident that if the Lord is repeating himself, that we should take, we should listen. The Bible says that your righteousness is as filthy rags. And if you're trying to come to God through works of the law, by doing this and doing that, and doing a little bit more of this and a little bit more of that, and you're not coming to God through Jesus Christ and faith, And obviously, repentance and holiness is <clears throat> in the process. So that's, you know, but a sinner gets saved by the name of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Faith in Jesus Christ is what needs to be preached. Because till a person gets saved, why does all the other stuff that you want to say to them matter? They won't hear you. They have a carnal mind. So give them the gospel of Jesus Christ and stop trying to play God. Let Jesus, who is God, do his work in saving the souls of sinners and stop making it about ourselves. All glory to the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen.